Dependency injection is very interesting. It essentially allows an object to use other objects and their properties or functions without having to worry about the implementation specifics of those dependencies. In other words, it aims to separate the concerns of constructing objects and using them. For that, it needs an injector, also known as an assembler or provider, that is responsible for providing dependencies to objects when they are needed. Think about how video consoles, for example, only require a suitable disk to operate. To play a different game, the gamer only needs to insert or swap out game disks in order to play a game, while neither games nor disks are required to understand anything about the console's inner working. Although dependency injection is a technique that is frequently used and implemented in programming languages like Java, C Sharp and Python, it is less frequently observed in JavaScript. Therefore, purely out of curiosity, we'll see how dependency injection would look exactly in JavaScript. Also keep in mind, dependency injection is one of the forms of the pattern called inversion of control. If you wish to learn more about such patterns, check out my video on programming principle. Now, if you didn't understand anything so far, don't worry. To make it easy for us, we're obviously going to take a look at the code. While doing this, we're also going to try to understand why you would need dependency injection in the first place. All right, so think of an example that we mentioned before. We have a PlayStation console, which a gamer uses to play games. And below here, we are instantiating this class with an object, PlayStation console, and we're calling this play method. So what does it do? The play method is calling the game loader inside the game loader object, all right? And the game loader has a method called load. So the game loader is also another class, as you can see here. And what it is, is basically a driver inside the console that is able to load different games. For example, Need for Speed Underground, all right? And the game loader has a constructor and it also has a load method, which basically is being called from the play method in the console. And the load method is going to start loading the game. Okay, if, you, if it's confusing, please pause the video and look at the code. But anyway, we are instantiating this game loader inside the console, which lets us to start the game, okay? But what is wrong with this approach? It doesn't use inversion of control and obviously there's no dependency injection. What if we want to try Underground 2, so a different game? We would literally have to reconstruct our console. So take our console apart and destroy it. So break it in a way. So we don't want to do we don't want to do that obviously. We want a, a more convenient way of swapping games, okay? So what I'm going to do is remove this. We no longer have uh, any hard-coded dependencies inside the console. And I'm going to create a constructor instead. So this constructor is going to accept a game loader and the game loader is going to be assigned to this dot game loader. Now we no longer are going to have a deep coupling or we're going to decouple our um, game loader. So in the bottom, we are going to instantiate a game loader like this, not const, but change it like this. And I think I copied it. So I'm going to paste it. Oops, let's remove the game loader. All right, looking good. And now let's say if I want to change it to a different game, I would do that easily, all right? Let's say Underground 2. And now, since we have this game loader decoupled from the console, I can simply take it and pass it inside the console. And now the console, since it has a constructor, it's going to work pretty much the same way as it did before, all right? Now, this is dependency injection and this is inversion of control. And even let's say we have a different class, let's say we have a new game loader driver, which is like a next generation game loader, which can load even better games. Let's say uh, something like Need for Speed, um, some, some like newer version of Need for Speed. So let's change the variable name first. Now I'm gonna change the name of the game as well. Let's say Need for Speed Pro Street. Well, it came out literally a couple years later after Underground 2. 
but it still looks much better than underground too. And now, since we have the same um, load method, and given that the new class is going to have the same methods, we can simply pass it inside our console. And now our PlayStation console has an upgraded game loader, okay? This is dependency injection in the real world. Okay, now let's be honest and admit that dependency injection can also have its disadvantages, all right? So in bigger code bases, it can obviously make your code flexible, reduce the boilerplate code, and of course lead to less bugs, but it's quite a complex topic as you noticed before. So again, in bigger code bases, it can get quite complex if you are not good with it. So what are, what are the things that you need to consider? First of all, an injection provider, right? In the previous example, you saw that we could create a new object and pass it to the next class, but who does it in a huge code base? You cannot do that on your own all the time. For that, you have some JavaScript libraries like Injection.js, Inversify.js, and so on. And of course, JavaScript frameworks like Angular. So let's take a look how Angular solves this problem with an injection provider. How does it know what to bind to what? So here we have a component called example component, right? Quite simple. And this example component can accept an array of providers. So in this case, we have only one service called logger service, which is a provider to this component, which is imported here and later is basically used in a constructor so that you can use it inside a component, like for example, called the write count method from this service. But let's take a look at this service itself. So if we go inside this logger service, we're going to see that it's basically a very simple code, but it has this annotation called injectable. So let's hover over. We're gonna see that this annotation is about decorator that marks a class as an available to as available to be provided and injected as a dependency. Basically, marking this ensures that this service has all the needed metadata and is checked within the component if it's basically appropriate to import it and inject it or not. So basically the injection provider is living inside Angular itself and is taking care of everything that you need. So if you're using Angular, you are already using inversion of control and dependency injection at its best. I hope this video was clear. If it wasn't, please leave me a comment and I will try to do my best to explain the concept again of, or provide you any support that you need. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm going to see you in the next one.